Good evening. My name is Mernoush Soroush from New York University Institute for the Study of Ancient World. Um, New Eastern archaeologists attempt to map and date canal systems in order to understand aspects of socioeconomic dynamics of uh, ancient societies who built, maintain, transform, or abandon these canals. How do we know what parts of the system were built or used in a certain period? Site Canal Association, that is, dating canals based on the dating of sites aligned with them, has been the standard method in archaeology since 1950s. Despite the widespread use of this technique, interpretations derived from the alignments of sites with relict canal segments are not always conclusive. A well-understood reservation in the application of this method is the lack of well-defined ceramic chronologies for the re regions under study and the fact that certain historical periods are more likely to be overrepresented or overlooked in the archaeological records. This paper addresses a different consideration regarding site canal association, one that seems to have been less systematically discussed in the context of Near Eastern irrigation studies. Without knowing the function and affordances of a certain canal in a given period, how do we know if and in what ways did contemporary sites align with it? Site layouts in relation to canal systems are culture's choices, reflecting the physical and social realities in time and space. Therefore, intertwined with the already complex issue of settlement dating and locations are the issues of locations and sizes of canals and hydraulic structures, as well as types of water flows available in the systems. Given our very limited knowledge of the highly complex relations between human and social and material context of irrigation, a major step in, is selecting the appropriate scale to study the dynamics of irrigation, settlement, and flows. One is forced to carefully select the abstractions to work with, and data availability is a key in considering the more promising methods and approaches. This paper reports on a current work in progress which tries to gain understanding of the hydraulic function of ancient canal systems aligned with, alongside the application of site canal association for dating canals. The case of study is the irrigated plain of Mianab in the northeastern part of the Khuzestan province of Iran. Mianab is home to larger scale pre and post Islamic irrigation systems whose configuration and developments are not well understood. The biggest permanent river of Iran, Karun, defines the western boundary of the plain of Mianab. The most renowned component of ancient irrigated landscape is the canal of Gargar that defines the eastern boundary of the plain. Furthermore, the historic town of Shushtar in the northernmost part of the plain contains several impressive ancient hydraulic structures that have been regulating the flow of Karun, Karun River into the canal systems of Mianab. In the interest of time, I will skip the history of scholarship on the topic of irrigation on Mianab. Suffice it to say that the consensus is that maximum expansion of irrigation systems on the plain and all of the major hydraulic headworks preserved in the city date to the Sasanian period and the systems undergone a decline sometime after the Muslim conquest of Iran. In the most recent and thorough study of the archaeological landscape of Mianab, Mogaddam used his survey data collected in 2001 and corona imagery to suggest that two different irrigation systems must have watered Mianab in antiquity. A pre sasanian system built on the canal of Daryun, watering north of the plain, and a second system, that of the monumental canal of Gargar, built in the Sasanian period in order to water and expand irrigated agriculture to the south of the plain. He argued that the present Gargar River was formed when the Sasanian irrigation system of uh, Gargar Canal fell into disrepair after the Muslim conquest, perhaps following an avulsion event. Having agreed with the existence of the two systems and the relative sequence of their development, I found the evidence from settlement distribution within the ancient irrigation landscape inconclusive to prove that the Gargar system was a one-time project built in the Sasanian period and that the Gargar River was formed as a result of lack of investment in the Gargar canal system in the Islamic period. If we assume that this palimpsest 
must represent a much more complicated and internally related development of irrigation systems on the plain that has been hypothesized. Could we explore that independent of site associations? A major incentive for the present study was that aerial photos available for the plane could yield information not only about the existence of canals in a certain location, but about their relationships to each other and to some hydrology hydraulically important locations. Hence, we decided to explore the possibility of a more thorough study of the canal systems of Mian Ab and of the nature of the collectible data along with the potentials of various modeling programs for such a task. The first step which is being presented here was mapping canals. Since 1960s, the Miana Plain has been sub subject to several large scale agriculture and irrigation projects and the archaeological landscape has been dramatically altered. Beside the declassified corona imagery, this research relies on two data sets acquired prior and at the onset of development plans. These data sets were purchased from the Iran National Cartographic Center, digitized and georeferenced. The goal of mapping was to step away from a Sasanian Islamic paradigm, be as subjective as possible, and map canal networks as completely as possible. Being objective proved hard given the high amount of information preserved in the aerial imagery. After some trial mapping, it was decided that mapping canals of four to five meters wide or bigger would maintain the balance between details and efficiency. A second challenge turned out to be whether the apparent widths of a canal represent the original widths. Canals that were short-lived and long abandoned were much easier to deal with. Those used over time appeared much smaller on the imagery as a result of sedimentation and erosion processes. Another question was how to deal with modern canals. The decision was made to map only those mo modern canals that clearly relate to and built on the ancient canal systems. Anticipating that our analysis will involve proposing and evaluating various scenarios regarding the structure and evolution of irrigation systems, a value of one to three was given to any canal segment, one being the most certain and three the least. What you see here is a snapshot of the results in one of the densest and best preserved areas. The task was much less straightforward in many other places. And here you see the results of the mapping over the entire landscape. The table here shows the basic statistics of the canal survey. Category one, the canals with highest certainty, seem to represent a wider array of canal lengths, lengths and widths than the other two categories, as expressed in the higher standard deviations in all categories. However, based on our assumption that Gargar River was a phenomenon developed later than the period we are interested in, the statistics were also run taking out all segments of the Gargar River from the data set, and the difference m became much less significant. When broken down in size categories, the distribution of canals over the survey area seems to be related to the canal widths. The larger canals between 12 and 80 meters wide are found in the upstream parts of the area, either in the north or along the Gaga River. Whereas the smaller canals between four and a half and nine meters wide are mostly found in the downstream parts to the south and further away from the Gaga River. The middle-sized canals between nine meters and 12 meters wide seem to fill the gaps between the two extreme categories and as such seem to connect larger and smaller canals as one would expect in a gravity-based canal system. An important observation is that the distribution of canals might suggest the existence of two or three canal systems in the survey area. An upstream one with somewhat more organically shaped canals and a more downstream one with canal features being more linear. The latter system, what we can call the Gargar system, seems to have been considered of, consisted of several parallel feeder canals of similar widths that expanded irrigation further to the south, ending in a major distribution point somewhere around the middle of the plain. Furthermore, the southernmost part of the plain might have been the upstream of a canal system, which would water areas outside and south of Mianop 
The possibilities of a, such a division in canal systems and its pos possible development over time would be a typical topic for our hyd hydraulic and hydrological modeling. This map shows the settlements found in the area projected on the canal system. Focusing on large and medium canals only, it seems to be possible to distinguish three clusters or types of settlements. Settlements close to and associated with large and medium canals in the upstream area in the north, settlements close to and mainly associated with Gargar River in center east, settlements further downstream in the south, mainly outside the direct reach of the larger and medium canals, which could have been considered the third uh, system originating in the south, associated with the third system originating in the south. The canal pattern suggested by the survey results is not atypical for gravity systems. One would expect that upstream more canals will be present as the potential area to be served through those canals is larger. Nevertheless, such an obvious property needs to be analyzed with some care. A, large, a larger number of upstream canals could be an expression of skewed water rights, with upstream users having the right or power to use more water than those downstream. Thus, one needs to check whether large canals are larger because of their functioning as feeders for the downstream areas or because of their functioning as source for upstream areas. In many cases, at least in gravity systems, a combination of the two is likely. If indeed the plane would have seen two separate water systems, the issue of water distribution within and between uh, between those systems needs further study. One cannot rule out the option that both systems were connected through a network of canals and not only by the Gargar Canal. In this context, the fact that unlike the Gargar system, the third system downstream seems to have functioned independent of water originating and flowing in the irrigation system of the proper Mianob is an important hydrological aspect to consider. What we encountered on the plain must have been the result of a longer period of canal development, abandonment, and use. Perhaps upstream canals are older than the, those downstream. Another option is that several smaller independent water systems on the plain were connected after some time. To explore how canals develop over time, dating canal features is needed. Until we are able to use more absolute dating methods like OSL, relating, relative dating would be needed. On one hand, we are looking at morphology and relationship of canals, for example, when some canals across, cross the others, to determine earlier canals from the later ones. On the other hand, association of certain canals with sites that are being surface dated is now more critically integrated into analysis. To engage more deeply with the details of such a dense and complicated water system as the one encountered on the Miana plain, additional data collection is needed and fortunately foreseen. Water availability would be restricted by river flows and rainfall. An important feature of the total water system are the headworks at Miana. Although the exact functioning of those works is not clear, it is possible to determine feasible boundaries under which the headworks would have worked, given their dimensions and river behavior upstream. On the other hand, to model hierarchy in a space, one would have to profit maximally from the fact that gravity pushed the whole sy system. As such, elevation of canals and canal features, as well as topography of the plane, are needed. Ideally, geomorphological evidence for changes over time needs to be collected. Any model scenario built on these data sets would start with the assumption that in gravity canal systems, fields downstream along a canal are potentially at the mercy of the area upstream. If people upstream decided to close the tap, people downstream have serious problems. Within this assumption, one can determine to what extent certain uses upstream and downstream could be supported. Reconstructing problems with the canal system may explain why changes or extensions were made. A fundamental aspect of the modeling methodology to be developed is that the available data is incomplete and biased. 
obviously the physical realities that are produced by the models do not determine the actual trajectory of development, but offer ranges of possibilities to be used as sounding board to determine reasonable exp explanations for model results and survey findings. Model results are also used to guide additional field work, for example, to visit certain specific areas in the field to explore in more detail the so-called predictive modeling. To conclude, we may not know the exact development history, histories of patterns of human settlements and water systems, but we, what, but we do know that patterns must have been created by human agency engaging with other human agents and material realities like rivers and rain. Layout of sites and fields in an irrigation system are strongly linked to physical realities such as water availability, hydraulic and hydrological behavior of water systems, position within the larger network, and social factors such as, such as management practices. Therefore, despite the incomplete nature of data, integration of data from hydraulic analysis, when possible, could nuance the application of the site canal association method. The reconstructed irrigation models that are physical representations of the irrigation systems with acceptable levels of detail and reality yield a set of possible irrigation scenarios. These scenarios will show which system layout would have supported what type of use, as some layouts exclude certain types of uses. This approach will not yield the one and only correct answer, but will yield the boundary values of different flows and uses of water. Model results can be related to data on settlement structure and other sources offering evidence of food and industrial production and social organizations. Thank you.